Locus, LC Muscles 28. Go fuck yourself. All because of my own stupidity. <clears throat> Posting a Where's Waldo pu puzzle. And I had to subdue the fact that if anyone can find where Waldo is in that photo, they can choose any movie they want me to watch, any bad movie they can want me to watch, and I'll review it. Sure enough, I have to, I had to suffer the consequences because Lucas, out of all fucking people, is the one who had to choose the movie for me. And it had to be this one. Because the thing is, folks... By the way, this is my second take on this as well. Thing is, folks, watching this movie again, because it's been years since I actually sat down to watch The Cat in the Hat. It's been around, what, since 2006? The movie came out in 2003. It's been, what, since 2006 since uh, I've seen it? I was a child then, so... After watching this movie again, memories started pouring back in my head about this film. As for what those memories are, it, it just brought the memories back of, I don't know. I don't know what to feel. I don't know what to think. I don't know what to say. See, unlike a lot of people, unlike a lot of people out there who are watching this film, getting themselves all angry, all upset, all worked up, you know, to where they're about to throw a fucking book at the wall, to where they want to break something or tear a piece of paper apart or break a cereal box or whatever. For me, I'm just watching this movie in disbelief. Because the thing is, I heard about I heard about the cat in the hat. Again, I saw it when I was a kid. I, I don't remember much of my first experience seeing it at all. But seeing it as an adult, it really tr truly represents of how bad this movie is. Because the thing is, the film alone, the the whole premise, the story alone, is supposed to have its quote unquote own adaptation from the classic children's novel from Dr. Seuss himself wrote many years ago. I think the book came out in 1957. The, the Cat in the Hat along the book itself is a time it's classic. It's a it's a tour de force masterpiece of a book to read. But when it comes time to movies, the thing is you can make a movie work correct. You can make a movie correctly if it's being an adaptation off of a book. I can go on and say multiple of those adaptations from a book or a comic or whatever, but for this one alone from a children's story, it makes you wonder exactly what was going through the mind of Mike Myers, him portraying this particular role, dressing up in that stupid-ass costume with the stupid-ass makeup, and having this humor that was just so out of left field Carries no merit, no points to anything that transpires throughout this film. It makes you wonder exactly what was going through his mind. This was like the downfall for Mike Myers. Am I, am I correct about that? I don't know. But, you know what, let me just get right to, okay, the, the movie itself. It is about, it is about two it's about two kids named Conrad and Sal. Now Conrad, this little fucker alone, he does exactly the opposite of what you're supposed to be telling him. Makes a mess, gets in trouble for it, and basically does whatever the hell he wants and doesn't even give a shit about the consequences that are being given to him. Then you got Sally who is none other than a narcissistic little Miss Goody Two Shoes uh bitch. They're left by themselves until the care of Mrs. Kwan, who was just absolutely useless in this fucking film. She'd rather just stay home watching the Taiwanese uh, parliament uh, argument that was happening. So while their MILF mother goes back to war handling her duties before a party before a party happens that she's supposed to be hosting, yeah, Mr. Humberflu Real Estates, I shit you right now, fuck, look. The motherfucker has got OCD that I can't even imagine. His OCD is so fucking out there. There's no boundaries. You can't write out of out, out of ten. You can't even find a proper spot out of ten. 
Like, you can't even say 10 out of 10. You can't say 20 out of 10. His fucking OCD is out of this, is out of the earth. It's not going to Mars. It's not going to Pluto. It's not even going to Crep 9. It's going to some planet that I never even heard of. It's going to some sort of unknown galaxy that we as human beings, especially the folks in NASA, have never even discovered this particular galaxy yet. His fucking OCD is so goddamn terrible that it is just... It's priceless. Like, you can't even pr figure out the proper words to say. Fucking hell. Hand sanitizer here. The bottle. When you, If you shake the fucker's hand, the bottle will be, be filled up to the top and it'll be all the way down to here. That's how bad his OCD is. Or better yet, he'll just use the whole bottle. Just take the fucking, you know, tube off and just start pouring all over his hands where it's all over the floor and making a mess. And somebody slips and breaks their ass. And then all of a sudden, they're going to have to file... A lawsuit on Humber Flu Real Estate for fucking falling and breaking their kneecap. I don't even know where the I don't even know where the hell this is going, but it's going somewhere. But anyways, while the milf mother goes back to her duties at the Humber Flu Real Estate, yeah, she, you can tell she's got herself a second occupation, working them corners for sure. Out of nowhere, the cat in the hat, Mike Myers shows up to teach them how to have fun because apparently both. Uh, Lucy and Conrad, oh, Lucy, Sally and Conrad, fucking Sally is a control freak and Conrad's a rule breaker and he has to teach them how to, well, have fun. Because the thing is, the cat and hat gave two options. The options were either a series of painful shots or a musical number. I have actually wouldn't have mind seeing the series of shots being given to both of them. Why? Because I probably would have made this movie a lot better seeing some pain, painful flu shots being uh, inflicted. Yeah, with those big ass needles. I mean, you saw the size. They were, they were big. God damn. I'd rather see that than see a musical number. But no, what? They had to choose the musical number. So. Oh, dear. Once the musical number happened, it was just, it was the worst thing I could ever see. It was pretty much, it was practically for me, the worst thing in the whole movie was seeing that musical number. I, I couldn't help but lay in my bed, sitting there in absolute cringe, just listening to that fucking musical number. Anyways, Cat shows up, teaches them how to fun, bizarre, confusing, obnoxious manner, while having their fun, things get messy. Literally, because the thing is, throughout the because the thing is, one of the things they wanted to, one of the things that they did was make cupcakes, which honestly, that whole scene alone just carries no fucking relevance to the story. While while the cupcake scene happened, you all know the infamous scene where he cuts off his own tail, and he says those infamous words of "son of a bitch," but he got censored. Again, carried on to nothing. So, their dog and Evans ran, ran, run, ran away with the lock that holds the crate to the mother of all messes. Because the thing is, while everyone was, have, was while everyone was stressed out with the fucking mess on the furniture, all over the walls or whatever, here comes the two things who look like Whoville rejects. Jesus Christ Almighty! So, well, I'll get to those, and I'll get to the fucking things in a little bit. So, the dog never ran away with a lock that holds the crate to the mother of all messes while on the hunt through town. Larry, who was played by Alec Baldwin, you know, the guy who's Mr. Poifix successful businessman, when in reality, he is a fucking bum. Legitimately, he's a bum. He does whatever he can to stop the children, get them in trouble, send Conrad to military school. Larry fucks, fucks the mother and have a good day. So... That's the movies that they're on a chase to get the dog back, stop the mother of all messes before the party happens. And folks, the, I, I I don't know where to go. I'm I don't even know what to even say. I don't even know what to transpire to. I, I can't even figure out the right words to even give in a remotely discussion of exactly what I can feel. So with whatever I got down in terms of that, let me just go over. So the whole scenery, when they go through the town, the town looks like a psychedelic trip gone wrong. Let me tell you, drugs are wrong. They're, they're bad for you. But if you're going to take LSD, you're, if, you, if you're going to take LSD, you're going to be expecting a world of shit. 
Or better, if you're getting more, if you're getting the fucking shrooms, you're in a world of shit. If you take the shrooms right now and through your point, you're gonna see the town that was in this movie. And all the houses are just so fucking bland and boring that there's no variety pattern at all. The town alone, too many bright fucking colors that was just absolutely hard on the eyes and it was just ridiculous. Mike Myers, I already talked about how I already talked about how I was as a cat in a hat, the musical number, the obnoxious humor. Let's talk about the thing that really got to me. Besides the musical number, was where they went. It's where they were going through the town. They stop at the one girl's birthday party because apparently Sally has a big ego for the fact that she can't be a head chef due to the fact that her friend wanted to play head chef just that one day. But no, she had to be a little Miss Goody Two Shoes. Hey Lucy, uh, why don't you do me a favor and survive a night in uh, Gordon Ramsay's Hell's Kitchen? Then you'll see exactly who the fuck. And the head chef is around there, you stupid little bitch. So, the cat gets hit in the balls. And the communards, easy. Just had, look at the communards. The commodores. I, I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying because my brains are so fried. So the, com so the commodores song, easy, started playing. And just that visual presentation alone, you look at that and you, and it just stays in your mind for... A good long while, because it's one of those pictures to where once it hits your scene, it just stays there. It's like it's like gorilla glue. It just stays there and doesn't even come off. It's like it's like duct tape. If you try, it stays on there for a good part of the time. But if you try and pull it off, it's going to fucking hurt. So if you try and get it off your mind, I mean, maybe a good thing, but the way you're gonna try to, it's gonna fucking hurt. So. The th let me talk about the let me let me just talk about the things the things along the Whoville rejects. So these two motherfuckers along with uh, what I got is supposed to be the quote unquote self conscious mind of of the little fat fuck Conrad. Apparently, exactly what it's supposed to be that he's supposed to be eating up his own medicine, doing the exact same things of the opposite, making a mess, not going through the consequences at all. What fucking rubbish that is. The things alone were annoying. They were just downright annoying and stupid. I hated the I hated the impromptu voices that they had. I hated the way they came off. They were obnoxious. You know what they remind me of? They remind me of little children that when you go to a grocery store, okay, when you go to a grocery store, you want to go in, get your shit, and go home. That's that's your only goal. But the thing is, is that when you are trying to shop, you are you got your little bu you got a little buggy there. You're going to the store. You know, you're picking up your pop. You're picking up your your chips. You're picking up your t your tonight's dinner. You're picking up your uh, ice cream, you're picking up whatever shit you need to go for your supplies that you got on your list. Then while you're trying to enjoy the peace and quiet while you're at the store, you see these two little fuckers, four or five years old, running around the store without their parents' supervision, making a mess, knocking shit off the shelves, screaming and hollering for the fact they didn't get their favorite candy bar. And what's the best thing you do? You grab a you grab a bottle of pop and you just hit them in the head. That's the best thing you can do. But in reality, you know what happened. You'll go to fucking jail for that. But, the th but to get to the point, these two, the both thing, one of the things to remind me of annoying ass little children. When you go shopping, they don't get in trouble at all. They just like, you know, just slap on the wrist, go do whatever it is you want. And they, they just don't listen to the opposite. So that's what the things were. They were two annoying fucking children. The mother of all messes. Now, since I talked about the fact that the town looks like a psychedelic trip, you want to talk about something that does that looks absolutely terrible with this whole CGI. The mother of all messes scene. Jesus H. Christ. You want to talk about terrible impromptu uh, self-pity, shameless advertise advertisements, Universal Studios? Yeah, you 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 tell me that. God damn. So the mother of all messes, the whole fucking scenery alone is just absolutely pathetic. The, gr the green screen, the whole green screen, the whole CGI is just absolutely garbage. Doesn't really showcase anything that's just amazing. Anything just that catches to the human eye. No matter how bad it tries to make it look beautiful, there's not even a fucking thing to say. Please keep your feet inside the quad and enjoy the ride! <laughs> <laughs> fucking 
Oh, Ryan the Kwan like he's a like he's a goddamn idiot. Holy shit balls. Now let's talk about the number one thing that really kept this movie just pathetic. The intentional adult humor that carries nowhere. The S H I T, which is the which was the original name for the slow car, the dirty hoe. Again, the cupcake scene where he chucks off his tail. And he says that. Adult humor from fucking Alec Baldwin, which was just. <clears throat> the, there was really no purpose for any of this humor at all. Like it's tri the movie was tr being a fucking tryhard to be so goddamn funny. It was it's ridiculous, absolutely pathetic, ridiculous. I didn't laugh a single thing, and people think this is a guilty pleasure. No. This, to me, is not a guilty pleasure. This movie even goes by far from being a guilty pleasure at all. It's fucking pathetic. Now, let me talk about Larry real quick. Alec Baldwin is Lawrence. I can see where Luke Nukem came from in terms of his whole fact. You know, when he mentioned the Judas Priest joke, I was I was thinking to myself, you know what? Well, okay, he said he fell down. He fell off a fucking cliff and he landed in the pot in the purple goop. So... I can see where Logan Newcomb's coming from, why it affected him personally, but still. <sighs> Folks, I'm just going to end the movie. I'm just going to end it right here because I have no more to go on. I have no more to go on with this. Folks, from my initial thoughts, no matter how hard I'm trying to even talk about this film, I can't even get a proper sentence out. Every time I watch these bad movies, I can't even properly get a fucking sentence out or a proper review out. No matter how many sets of notes I have, the thing is, it's the overall impact of how this movie left on my mental state. That's what this motherfucking movie did. This movie got me dizzy. It gave me a headache. I didn't feel good watching this film. This film made me sad. Look at me. It made me fucking sad. It was just a fucking spit. It was a fucking hawkaloogie. It was a hawkaloogie on the fucking, on the cat and half book alone. It's one of my favorite childhood memories. I won't be a bit surprised if they make a fucking movie based off the novel If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. I will not be surprised if that happens. Overall, folks, this movie is just absolute garbage. The film is ridiculous. The Mike Myers is absolutely annoying. And I'm noxious as the cat in the hat. The humor is just retarded. The whole, the whole cinematography, the town set is just a is just a complete psychedelic trip gone wrong. The kids are annoying, are annoying little assholes. The things are little bastards. Fuck this movie. The cat in the hat's an easy zero out of five. So with that being said, folks, I'm getting the fuck out of here. So with that, ciao for now and go fuck yourselves.